what's up guys thanks so much for clicking on the video my name is leah and we're gonna recap and review real housewives in new jersey this is season 13 episode 19 the third part of the reunion and it's over praise on hot because <laughs> i'm tired but let's get into it all right, y'all, so before we get into the review, we gonna get a little spicy. We have three things to talk about. So the first is gonna be Frankie and Frank's response to the reunion, as well as this audio or alleged audio, cause I don't really know if this man is saying it, <laughs> but it's supposed to be the alleged audio of Bo Deedle responding to what Joe said about him on the reunion. And then we're also gonna talk about, um, allegedly what we did not see or what we did not know about what was going on during the reunion from the page um your mom is watching so first up frankie and frank's response so i'm getting this information about frankie and frank's response from the page all true t the information will be linked below but they got this information from the website about the trh.com and pretty much it was a screenshot of dms that someone asked Frankie about the whole situation about him falling out with Dolores. So it says Dolores and Teresa saw something about Frankie Jr. working for Louis going bad. And the person in the DMs is like, is there any truth to this? So Frankie responded by saying, absolutely not. Um, job was great, learned a bunch and ended up going to a bigger firm. Awesome experience. So it seems like Frankie didn't really have an issue with what happened. I can initially see him being upset because no one likes to get fired, especially if they weren't prepared for it. Most of the time you feel better leaving a job instead of, or, or quitting a job instead of someone firing you. So it probably caught him off guard and we'll talk more about that in the review. But it seems like Frankie ain't really that stressed or pressed about what happened. So then someone also got a screenshot of Frankie in the, not Frankie, Big Frank in the comments. And this is what he had to say. He said, I might be the last one these days to throw compliments towards Louie. But one thing I can't deny is that since I've known Louie in the presence of his sons, he has demonstrated nothing but being a caring, understanding, and loving father. So no matter how I may feel on the other issues these days, I will not be be the one to deny a man the greatest compliment a man can receive and that is being a being at the most important title of all a father and then he added Louie so it's kind of weird because I'm like Frank had a lot of heat for Louie during the reunion and again I'll give you more detailed thoughts in the review but now you sing in a different tune after the reunion aired and maybe it's the responses from the viewers or maybe you, Frank saw himself and he didn't like the way things went but this is kind of weird to me but let's move on to this audio so on to Bo Deedle dragging Joe Gorga. So this article is dated June the 14th that I got from heavy.com, but it's saying that Bo Deedle called into the radio show called YABC Radio Sid and Friends on June the 12th to give his thoughts about the reunion as well as Joe Gorga. So I'm gonna play it and then we're gonna discuss. I'm gonna clean up a little, uh, little homework here. Cause yesterday I read something and I'm gonna say it on your show. That little, that little uh, midget, uh, the housewives of New Jersey, and we're putting this to bed today. All of a sudden, this little punk Joe Gawker comes out, and he has something to say to me that I lied about. I did investigations on the cast members again. I'm telling you right now, Joe, I saw you in Avra. I told you and your wife I did not do that. As far as me doing any other personal investigations for Lou other than the cast members, that's none of your business, you little punk. And I tell you what, if you call me a liar, and you want to have a problem with me, I don't think you want me after you. Because I tell you right now, Joe, I'll do the investigation on you for free by me. I don't need Lou to pay for it. Wow. You better know who you're talking to. I'm not one of those little punks that you're running around. You might go in the gym there and watch your little muscles, but muscles doesn't give somebody balls, okay? So you better. You want to play with me? I tell you what, why don't you ask some of your friends about me? I'm the wrong guy you mess with, okay? And let's leave that at that. Hey, Y'all heard Bo Deedle, and here's the thing. I had to Google him because I had to figure out, is he 
is he capping or is he really like, is he really about this life? And y'all, he about this life. <laughs> like, this man was in the police force until 1985. He's 72 years old. So, you know, when you get old, you act, you, you act like you don't care because you got one foot in the grave. Um, he's a media personality. He's done several movies like Goodfellas, The Wolf of Wall Street, The Irishman. They said that while he was on the force, he made 1,400 felony arrests and, um, he got 30 on the job injuries. So like he, he, like they say, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. It's giving that. And he's actually known for being a private investigator. And normally when people know about what you do as like, that's the way they know you, that means you're pretty much good at it. So if I was Joe and Melissa, I would tread lightly and the re and more so Joe, because I don't really think there's that much negativity about Melissa other than people saying she'd be wearing fake labels and her boutique be like, you know, they be off brand stuff, but that's not a big deal. But for Joe, I feel like you messing with people who are letting you know that they have no issue airing you out. And there's a lot of rumors about Joe that they don't bring to the show. And the rumors I've heard have, and I'll say allegedly, cause I ain't got no money for anybody to take, have been that he is banned from all the hardware places like Home Depot and Lowe's that like he steals other people's contracting work that he's not that good at that stuff that it's a lot of stuff out there that he is bad at business so it's like you're messing with someone who if they felt the need to could blast you and it does leave an icky feeling because it's like this show should not be taken to this level. And I don't feel like it's just been brought on because of Louie. I feel like, well, you know what? I'll save that. I'll save that for the review because they talk about that in the show. But yeah, if I was Joe, I would ease up on the gas because what you do on TV and in the Bravo sphere and the entertainment industry, you can't do with certain people like that. So be careful, bro. <laughs> So the next thing we're going to talk about is this tea from Your Mom is Watching, which is also a Bravo, like, in, like you know, Instagram blog page. And this is information that they are saying that someone who was a, uh, a friend of someone that worked with Teresa, so, you know, several degrees of separation. So we don't know if this is true. So it's all allegedly, all alleged. And they're saying that these, um, it's basically about Teresa and Louie trying to take down Margaret. But they're saying these are the things that was not talked about at the reunion. So this is how it starts off. It says, what was left out of the reunion? It says, in February, Louis and Teresa hired a publicist and the publicist in turn hired my friend to help. Teresa has her own publicity team, but the new hire was for two specific reasons, a new app Louis created and to help with social media. Teresa personally called my friend to explain to her what she would need. It was a one month long job that could potentially turn into a long-term job. One of Teresa's biggest concerns were all the lies being spread about her by Margaret Joseph. Teresa wanted help dispelling rumors online and for my friend to try to think of ways to discredit Margaret. The directive was clear. Margaret, um, get Margaret to lose, um, her deal with Walmart. Louis called my friend next and spelled out the same objective. Take down Margaret. He also needed help with publicity for his app he created with his son. But my friend told told him he seemed more... Um, Oh, he seemed particularly interested in getting Margaret canceled. Louis said he had been on the phone with, with a blogger that wanted want, went by the handle Love Love Gabriella and that she had a lot of dirt on Margaret. He gave my friend her phone number and told my friend to call her and get this information to use against Margaret. My friend told me about this new gig with concern in her voice. She is a reputable publicist and has never been asked to orchestrate any kind of negative online campaign before. I contacted Margaret to warn her that this plan was in the works specifically to target her, to target, to get Margaret to lose her deal with Walmart. Margaret took this very seriously and she contacted Bravo to let them know. Bravo in turn 
um, contacted Teresa's attorney to tell them to shut down the PR campaign. Before my friend could even decide whether it was morally or professionally appropriate to carry this out, the campaign was shut down by Bravo. Margaret also contacted the police. Louis had called to threaten her son at work and was hiring people to try and take her down. These acts she felt were harassment and illegal. I've spoken to, de de to the detective to tell him what I knew. At this point, my friend was hesitant to talk because Louis was still contacting her and she didn't want to to betray a client. Also, she had not gone through with the campaign. Louis called her on the morning of the reunion to ask my friend for help preparing him for the information to be brought up by Margaret at the reunion. My friend told him Margaret had given me a gift card to thank me for bringing this to to my attention, I guess she meant to her attention. And Louis said he was going to bring this up to try and get Margaret discredited for paying off the blogs. After the reunion filmed and Margaret brought up all of this information on camera, Louis contacted my friend to ask her if she was signing after David saying he didn't hire her to launch a smear campaign against Margaret. He set up a lunch with my friend in um, New York City to discuss this but didn't show up for the lunch and she never heard from him again. Now that my friend is no longer Teresa and Louis' publicist, she is allowing me to tell this story. These are not rumors I just heard. This is my friend's 30 years telling me what Teresa and Louis asked her and paid her to do. They made it clear to her that their end goal was to take down Margaret by any means necessary. They had no problem inferring with her livelihood or interfering with her livelihood. And this to me is out of the scope of reality show animosity. It disturbs me that Bravo cut all of this information out. The edits seemed to favor Teresa. Bravo took this seriously with what happened, but they clearly did not want the public to know. I don't think this bodes well for the future of RLHONJ. If Louis is on the show, I imagine this will continue. I only know about this one instance, but I'm sure there are more stories like this out there. So here are my thoughts. I could kind of see this being true. <laughs> I could. I told y'all Louis gave me slimy, but I could also see Margaret doing the same thing. I like Margarita. I like the trough mouth lady, but I could see her doing something just as shysty. Like I could, like you being friends with Laura, y'all were friends for 20 something years. That whole saying birds of a feather flock together is true. Y'all be doing dirt on people. It might not be to this degree, but I could see this happening. Now it's wrong for them to try to mess up that lady's livelihood. Like you don't take money out of nobody's pocket like that. If this is all true, you know, it's alleged, but if this is all true, um, I don't know what the point of, of letting this information out Cause, the, Cause what made me feel like this could be a reach is them saying that this reunion made Teresa look good. And in my opinion, it didn't, it didn't. This reunion made Teresa, Louie, Joe, and Melissa look like a bunch of assholes and they deserve each other. So I didn't think anybody got a favorable edit in my opinion. So I know that was a long spicy corner, y'all, but we about to get into this review. So the episode opens up and we see all the men get on stage and you can tell that the vibes is off, especially with the left side of the couch that has Margaret, Rachel, and Melissa and their husbands. But it's understandable if everything that they are saying that Louie allegedly did to them is actually true. So, so like, like I said, the vibes is not vibing. So when um, the reunion like really starts, they ask Frank, two questions to kick off the reunion. They ask him about how his relationship with Polly is and is he still living with David. We find out that he's not living with David anymore. Him and Brittany signed like, I guess a new lease or whatever are purchasing a home, which I mean, Frank is like 60 basically. And I feel like by that time you should have your own house. Like it, being that old and having a roommate don't make sense to me unless that roommate is like your child uh, your parents, another relative, or a significant other. And, you know, we call pets roommates where I'm from. You know, a dog, a cat, or something like that. Or you should just be by yourself. Like, I just was like... But, you know, good for him. We also find out that him and Polly are in a good place. They asked Polly, and Polly was like, yeah. And I knew that was going to happen, bro. 
I knew that was going to happen. And the main reason why, because I told y'all throughout my reviews, I saw Polly and Frank, like pictures of them hanging out together on Instagram. And I was like, oh yeah, they cool. And they have an understanding. Basically, Frank just thought he was losing his best friend, which is Dolores. And he didn't want to lose her because that's, you know, that's his homie. That's his homegirl. And Polly understands that there's no like sexual relationship between them. So he is a lot more understanding about their relationship. So the reunion continues and the uh, viewer asks like Andy asks a viewer's question that is directed towards Frank where the person is like well Frank can you tell us what happened between Polly not Polly what happened between Frankie his son him and Dolores' son and Louie because remember throughout the season we found out that Frankie was working for Louie and I guess he no longer works there and I guess something happened so we see unaired footage of Joe and Frank talking at like in construction gear where Frank is like saying you know Frankie called me talking about hey dad like I, I got fired. I'm trying to contact Louie. I'm not hearing back. No one's getting in touch with me. I don't know what's going on. Like, what should I do? So I thought this was funny because the way Dolores leaned up when they started talking about this, it reminded me of season eight Dolores when she was beefing with Danielle Stobbs because Dolores throughout the reunion when nothing was posed to her, like none of the questions were posed to her. She was very relaxed, very calm. Even before they got into this topic, when Frank was just talking about his relationship with Dolores, she was very calm and very like reserved. The moment she heard them talk about her child, the way that lady leaned up and leaned forward, like, uh-uh, 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 what we talking about? So Frank says underneath his breath, I'm not going to say anything first. So then you hear Joe talking to, um, to Louie where he's like, Louie, tell us what happened. Tell us what happened, Louie. And Louie is like, Joe, tell us what happened. Like, what you talking about? And so Frank, I know. So then you hear Melissa underneath her breath telling Joe, let Dolores, like, you know, let Frank tell it. Let Frank, you know, because this is their family. We already got beef. Like, let them flush this story out. So then um, Dolores is like, okay, I'm about to nip this in the bud. Because then you hear Frank before Dolores speaks say, I'm not going to say anything first. They have to be the ones to say it. I think basically Louie and Dolores to say something. So Dolores leans up with her hand out. Like she says, Joe Gorga, me and you been friends for how many years? And we ain't never had no beef. So don't, so let it go. Let this go. Cause there's nothing that happened between Frank and Louie. So then Dolores tells Louie, you know, thank you for like, you know, what you did for my son because Frankie does have a new job and I guess maybe his connection to Louie set him up to be working at a better job because like I said in Spicy Corner, when we talked about it, in the DMs, Frankie pretty much says he loved his new job so... And he ain't got no beef with Louie. He ain't got no beef with Louie. So Dolores is like, let it go. Let it go. And you could tell by Melissa's face that she was kind of... I think taken aback at the fact that Dolores said anything because Dolores isn't normally like that active at the reunions, but she was like, don't talk about my child the same way. Um, Melissa got upset with Teresa about Antonia. So I think Melissa understood like, let it go because I think she ended up saying like, she doesn't want to talk about it. And I'm just kind of like, well, she did talk about it. She told y'all ain't nothing happened. And she said, whatever. I think Dolores is just like, don't be putting me and my family into y'all bull. Like, cause this right here is mess and we, we are not connected to this. So you hear Polly, and this is where Polly kind of got a point for me, even though that man's still married and need to get a divorce. Cause it's been 14 years. You've been separated. But when Polly said, Dolores, you know, chill, you know, calm down, like ignore it, Dolores, just ignore it. He was basically telling his girl, don't, don't get amped. Cause if you, <laughs> cause if you get rowdy, I might have to get rowdy too. So they let that go. So we start getting into this Bo Deedle investigation storyline, which is wild to me. Cause so much other stuff happened in the reunion that we didn't talk about. We didn't talk about the situation between Dolores and Jennifer in the beginning. They really didn't talk about the situation between Rachel and Danielle. Like they didn't flesh that out or the situation between Danielle and Margaret. They didn't really flesh it all the way out. It was just like y'all were, they were really harping on this investigation storyline. So John is like, I want to know why, 
um, Teresa and Louie had me investigated and were contacting my ex. Teresa is shocked. Like, she was like, what are you talking about? And Louie is like, no, we didn't. So John pulls out this huge envelope that I that had blank printer paper in it because he never took anything out. At least with Margaret, Margaret was taking things out of her envelope like no this is the he did this he did this this he did this like she was real like uh, margaret was like i'm not i came here to play no games with y'all so john keeps like he holds up the envelope like i got connections big connections and louis is like what are you talking about so then rachel explains that we found out that john not john we found out that louis contacted john's ex while she was in jail or something and louis like no i didn't and john was like in order to contact somebody you have to be on their list then rachel brings up that she saw bo deedle at like a restaurant where her and melissa were at and we were sitting next to a table and i guess he came up to them and told them that he wasn't even investigating them but they were like it was too much of a coincidence and he was like I was like, okay, maybe I eat at the same restaurant. But she's like, no, it was more to it than that. So then you have Margaret pulling out her folder and she's like, what's up? Like, what's up? Like, like, let's like, let's really have a talk about it. So then Andy brings up Bo Deedle and Louis yelling Bo Deedle's name out out at the at the um end of the season rap party. And Louis is like, well, I only yelled it out out of anger. But then Margaret brings up, well, you said it the next day after the party. And he did. He said it the next day that Bo Deedle is his friend and he got dirt on everybody on this cast. And I was like, yeah, you you look shysty as hell, Louis. You look shysty as hell. <laughs> so he's like, nah, he really didn't do that. He was like, Bo Deedle, I guess, texted Andy or contacted Andy to let Andy know that he hasn't investigated anybody on the show but he also still got dirt on people so I don't know if dirt came to him by way of like people just telling him information or if he really did investigate them and then Teresa brings up like will Margaret be doing that to everybody else and then Melissa was like no um information just falls in her lap so we end up seeing Joe and Louie get into it like they start going back and forth trading insults and going off on each other melissa tries to tell joe to calm down i think Teresa was like it's okay louie and andy is getting pissed because now Teresa and melissa start to bicker and he's like i need y'all to shut up like shut like i can't speak and normally i am not a fan of andy yelling at the women but by the end of this uh reunion I understood because like I said, like I titled my last um, reunion, it gave playground games since the beginning of the reunion, since part one, the way Melissa and Teresa were going back and forth, it was so childish. It was like, you're ugly. No, you're ugly. Well, you're, you're a frog. Well, you're a frog. It was like, y'all are annoying me. Y'all are no annoying me and I can get how frustrating it is. So Andy was like, shut up, shut up. Like he was just mad. So they're going back and forth. You have Margaret being like, well, why would you even investigate us? And I, my only thing would be like, they were annoyed with Margaret last season. Like the way Margaret was coming at, um, Louie about all his dealings with the girls coming out that he was just like, girl, I'm gonna get you back. I'm going to get you back. And so Margaret ends up pulling out one of her like receipts in her envelope and handing it to Andy. And it was a, um, a screenshot, I guess, or, a like of a cell phone number. And Louie was like, yeah, that's my number. But I ain't like, he was like, I ain't do that. I'm sorry that happened to you. And so they start arguing back and forth and it's just getting worse. And you could tell like everybody else, especially on the, um, the right side of the couch, like Dolores looked uncomfortable. Danielle looked sad. Like she couldn't believe that they was really like going there with each other. And Danielle was just kind of like, wow, like this could be my life. This could be my life. So the conversation continues because then Andy brings up about Pizzagate and about the whole oven thing. And what it boils down to, to me, 
Louis is saying that he had the money up front, that everything was in Teresa's name. I think like it was going to be like 10% for Joe, the rest for Teresa, because like he was splitting the bill because Louis showed up to their meeting with all the money. Joe didn't have anything. And then the, the thing fell through. And the only person, because Teresa's like the only person who should really be mad is Louis because he lost money. So you have Joe saying, no, I thought we were just having a conversation about it. I didn't know that he was trying to go in already. Like I had money, but I didn't know we was trying to go in. I just thought this was just like a brainstorming idea. But Melissa tries to chime in. Teresa tells um, Melissa to shut up because she was like, neither one of us was a part of this conversation. So why are you speaking? And I kind of agree with Teresa where it's like, if y'all weren't a part of the conversation or the initial like fallout, you shouldn't add your two cents in until there's like, you know, the base level of understanding of what happened and they couldn't get to it. Cause then after that, Teresa and Melissa started arguing again. It was a mess. So the reunion continues and they start talking about the Jacqueline thing where Teresa brings up that Jacqueline told her that Joe Gorga, her brother, had something to do with her getting locked up. And Andy asks Joe, like, how does he feel about that? He was like, are you nuts? I would never. And Teresa's like, I didn't say, like, you did it on purpose. I just said that you hated Joe Judai so much that you wanted to hurt him, which in turn hurt it hurt me so frank speaks up and he's like i want to let you know like client attorney privilege i was joe's attorney during that time and we were like you know contacted by whoever the, the who's doing the investigation but joe never said anything and then everyone was like well why do you breathe, believe jacqueline like all the negative and nasty things she said about you now you believe her and rachel was like why would you think she would tell you the truth and then Margaret is like, why do you always believe the bad things about your family? So, which is true, but that also to me lends to that they've never really been a family or there's been situations that have happened that have pretty much shown that she, Teresa can't trust her family the same way that everyone else trusts their family. So, um, they show a flashback because Andy is like, Teresa, Oh, I'm surprised you even believe Jacqueline because all of the beefage y'all had. And so they do the flashback. And Teresa's like, I only responded to the things that Jacqueline did to me. So so I fight fire with fire. And Joe is like, I would never. I would never. So then it continues and they bring up Gia um, allegedly saying that uh, Joe could do better, like calling. And Teresa gets pissed, like visibly pissed the same way Melissa got pissed when they were in Ireland and Teresa um, says, was about to say something about Antonia. And Teresa's like, are you serious? Are you serious? Like she was disgusted. <laughs> she was upset that she got up. Cause I don't know, I feel, I, I, my thing cut out. I don't know if they called Gia or, or whatever, but I don't know. I think they called her and Gia says she didn't. And Next thing you know, Teresa's like, mommy and daddy would be disgusted by you. And she walks out and she's like, don't come after me. Don't walk after me. So they walk out and um, they go to the bag. Louie follows her. As she's walking, Melissa was like, it's never been like this. It's never been this bad. Like, since it's only been this bad since he came into the picture, i.e. Louie. And in my opinion, it's been this bad. It's been this bad. We actively seen Joe Gorga and Joe Judice fight each other. We've seen y'all fight at the christening. We saw y'all fight when your cousins was on. We seen y'all get real gutter with each other. I just think that it got kicked up a notch with Louie, but y'all have never been a family. Y'all are just doing what y'all normally do. It's just gotten to a level where y'all didn't think it would ever go because maybe there was an understanding. But in my opinion, the fans have made it worse. The fans have made it worse because I've seen people who are 50 and, and like 40 and 60, like taking this show so to heart that they are like stalking these people's children online. So, and like, they're talking about people sending them death threats. It's y'all is wildin' cause it's never been this deep. Y'all are wildin'. So Teresa's in the back. She's calling Gia. She's just like, 
bro, like, I can't believe, like, they would do this to you. And G is telling her mom, like, calm down, like, calm down, sweetie. Like, it's so, like, <laughs> you know, Gia be parenting her parents. She's like, it's not, it's not that bad. It's okay. It's okay. Don't cry. Don't cry. And she was like, Gia, I'm done. I'm done. Like, I'm really done. And so Andy follows her and he even apologizes for yelling at her. And he was just like, it's a lot going on. And she said, it's cool. And G and Teresa's like, I didn't even know that like, they called, like she called him. She was probably asking him to come to the wedding. And that's what Louie said. I think she was calling him to ask him to come to the wedding. My thing is, is even if Gia said it, y'all don't really like her. Joe and Melissa don't like Gia. So it's like, why would you take what she said with a grain of salt? Like I would take what she said with a grain of salt. I don't think she said it. I do think she called to ask him to come because even like the younger sisters were like, if he don't come, we done with him too. So maybe, and my thing is like, we've seen Gia run interference for her parents and for her aunt and uncle since they got onto the scene. Like people being angry at Gia for speaking up is wild to me because we saw this girl grow up in it. That's what happens when you're a child and you grow up around dysfunction. When you want to be able to say something, you say something. Like when you get to the point where you're like able enough to say it, you say it. And that's just what she's doing. So I don't fault her too much for speaking up because at the end of the day, it's her family that's imploding. It's not ours. Like we get to go home and be cool with our parents. Oh, and happy Father's Day. <laughs> you know, I get to call my daddy and be like, what's up? Like I'm not dealing with these issues. So Teresa finally comes back on stage and you can tell that she's like, She's done and it, it, she looked defeated. She like extremely defeated. So she's sitting on the couch. Andy is like, you know, let Teresa and Joe say something to each other. Joe is like, you got something to say, Teresa? And Teresa don't say nothing. That's how I knew like it was, they might really be done as a family. Cause Joe was like, you know, Teresa, no matter what, I'm always going to be there for you. I'm always going to be there for you. You know, I'm a, like, if you, if you get hit by a bus, I'm going to be there for you. And for you, 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 me and Louie, you know, Louie, just ignore me and I'll ignore you and we can coexist. So then Frank follows that up by saying, you know, Louie, I just need to know you're not going to investigate us anymore. And Louie is like, I never did. And Frank's like, okay, okay, okay. But like moving forward, we're not going to do that. And he says, I got it. So he like promptly walks over and shakes Frank's hand, shakes Joe's hand, goes over to Rachel and apologizes. Well, not really apologize. He said, you know, you're a wonderful mother. Gets in her face, you're, which I feel like is an intimidation tactic. Gets in her face, you're a wonderful mother, uh, everything. But then again, if he stands up, that'd be intimidating. But I guess he was like, wonderful mother and then John same to you and John is like I can't be cool with you until you admit that you did this like you investigated and Joe and and Louis like I didn't so I'm not gonna admit that he's like you need to admit it and Louis like I'm not going to admit it and he still has the folder in his hand and I'm like at this point you want him to admit it but you don't got the like you're not pulling out the proof pull out the proof sir pull it out throw it in his face and then Joe's like no 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 shots 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 you know let's go take shots and Polly comes and gets Louie and they walk off the stage so it's the end of the reunion and they're doing closing remarks before they do their toes Andy goes around and asks the ladies like we're like where are we at and so he asks Danielle and Danielle's like you know uh, Cause he asked Danielle, well, how do you feel about seeing your brother? And she's like, I really don't know. I might like pass out if he says hi to me, but I'm hoping it's good because I don't want what I just saw. Basically alluding to what happened between Melissa and Teresa. She's like, I don't want that type of energy. She, he then gets to, um, Jennifer and Dolores and Dolores is like, yeah, we got to get back to having fun. Jennifer is like the most fun we had was in, um, Ireland because everyone seemed like friends like we were having a good time and we need to get back to that Rachel and Danielle pretty much kind of squashed their thing Margaret and Danielle kind of squashed it but Danielle was like all the beef you had was made up in your head and I was like Danielle now is not the time to be confrontational 
we round in the end of the episode, the end of the reunion. So then he asks, uh, so Andy goes to blue and gold and Andy said, you know, when we started off the reunion, you said you wanted peace and you wanted to close the, the, the chapter saying that to Teresa and Teresa was like, yes, I want that. So, and I really do feel like Teresa is done. And it's weird to me that Joe and Melissa aren't done after all of the things that they have said that Teresa did or, or cause them grief. Like I would be done with Teresa if I was Melissa and Joe, because then you have Melissa saying that she's, she's going to forever love Teresa. And like, she was like, I've, I like, I don't know what I have to do for you to accept me, but I'm going to love you. And I worry about you. And I'm like, why are you worrying about somebody that does not like you? Like I wouldn't waste that energy. So it does lend to the narrative of people feeling like y'all only y'all want this beef with Teresa because it keeps you on the show. Because if you think about it, Melissa really didn't have no storyline this season. Like, Teresa got married. Jennifer's dealing with her, her Bill's waywardness. Um, Danielle and her brother versus Rachel. Uh, we have Margaret and um, Jennifer. Margaret, uh, Margaret versus Danielle. Uh, Jennifer versus Rachel. We had Dolores versus, uh, what's her name? versus Jennifer and then Dolores and Frank's situation with Polly and then Margaret I mean Margaret was in beefs so but Melissa really wasn't in anything until the latter half of the of the season so it's like I don't know because it does lend to that narrative that a lot of people feel like they're only on the show to beef with Teresa and honestly with this pause coming up I think it is needed I think it is greatly needed because the energy is is off and I don't really know how they're going to move forward. In my opinion, I think they should get rid of both Melissa and Teresa because I feel like you could have a show with just Rachel, Margaret, Dolores, Jennifer, and Danielle with Jackie and what's her name? Jennifer Fesler. That could be a good show. That could be an interesting show with them, but I don't know. I don't know how long this pause is going to be. I don't know what the pause is really going to do, but I think the network has realized that they can't go any further. I mean, if Teresa gets off the show, I think she would still be fine because almost a million people were watching her wedding special. And y'all, people ain't pulling numbers like that anymore by themselves. So I feel like she would be fine without her show. Melissa has diehard fans. So I believe she would be okay without the show. She has her podcast that's doing well. She could probably start being like Tamra and Teddy where they talk about all, you know, the different housewives shows. It's just like, I don't know where they gonna go after this because I just don't know. I don't know because like they built the show so much around Teresa that it's like people can't see the show without Teresa but there's certain people that said they can't see the show without Melissa so I'm just like I don't know what y'all are gonna do moving forward I think it was always the network's misstep to center the show around one person because it's like the show isn't called the Teresa show, even though a lot of her fans feel that way. But I feel like they could give Teresa her own show. Her YouTube page is doing numbers. And I think she only got two videos up. So I'm like, I don't know. So I, I am curious to see what's the outcome of this pause. Like, are they going to get rid of one person? Are they going to get rid of both of them? Are we just going to scrap it and start all over and with a new cast and then have a legacy show? The same way that's happening with, um, what's it called? With Atlanta. Like, people aren't happy with these two franchises right now. And it's crazy because OC has been able to kind of like subvert the narrative, but they got rid of like the heavy hitters and kind of kept, kept Shannon, you know, then they brought in, what's her, but then they had Bronwyn and Bronwyn's antics kept the show going during the panty, you know, the panty. So it's just like, and even Beverly Hills, but that's because majority of the cast is not there anymore. So it doesn't feel like we know everything about them. And I think that's the issue with Atlanta and 
Real Housewives of New Jersey is like we've gotten to the point with certain people on these shows where we know so much about their lives that it's like there's nothing else that y'all need to give us. So maybe it's just time to move on. But yeah, y'all, that is it. That is all. Remember to be bravely authentic. Drop down in them comments below as well as subscribe. And I'm out, y'all. Deuces. Oh, 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 oh,